It's 10 p.m. in Banjul, and from our studios on MDI Road, this is the news for the headlines. Deputies cover through the activity report and financial statement of the National Roads Authority before endorsing its viability. In the dock facing criminal trial, seven defenders in the multi-million Dallasi fraud case continue their defense on Thursday at the High Court in Banjul. War-weary Syrian refugees continue to flee much of Aleppo towards the countryside, as the fighting in the old city shows no signs of abating. And reports from North Korea suggest the execution of a top army general in the military establishment, the latest in a series of purges allegedly sanctioned by the Supreme Leader. Well, viewers, those are your headlines with me, Winifred Nicole. Thanks for joining us once again. The President, His Excellency, Sheikh Professor Al Haji Dr. Yahya AJJ Jame Babili Mansa, has received a congratulatory message from one Isa Tubaji, and the message states My dear President, I wish to express sincere thanks and appreciation for the unprecedented development you have registered since the advent of the 22nd July Revolution to date. Your benevolent gesture and love for humanity is a clear testimony in the eyes of the whole world. You are indeed a champion of democracy, of which all individuals and governments should emulate Your Excellency's leadership style. In view of this, I would like to congratulate you, wishing you good health, long life, happiness, and great success to your family and the entire nation. May Allah guide and protect you from all evils. Another message addressed to Professor Jame comes from members of the Gambia Transport, Agriculture, Food, and Industrial Workers Union, and it states, We extend to Your Excellency sincere best wishes. We, the drivers of the Gambia, had learned of your decision to ban the Gambia Transport Control Association from all its activities. The drivers appreciate your decision and commend the Trade Ministry. We once again assure you of our full support and desire to work with your government. We pray for your good health and continued leadership as you steer the affairs of our country, the message concludes. Meanwhile, the Office of the President hereby reminds the general public that the ban on charcoal production still remains in force. Therefore, all those found burning wood trunks, especially trunks of fresh trees, to produce charcoal will face the full force of the law. All chiefs and alcalos are therefore strongly warned to ensure that the ban is upheld throughout their districts and villages. If by any chance anyone is caught in this illegal act, the release adds, the respective chief and alcalo in the village, in the area rather, which, will, which the illegal act is committed, will be held responsible. Barely 24 hours after submitting the activity report and financial statements of the National Roads Authority to the PACPEC committees of the National Assembly, officials of NRA were back at the assembly chambers to complete the process. Arohibite was listening to the deliberations and she reports deputies had some tough questions for them. Reappearing before deputies a day after presenting the institution's activity reports and financial statement, the management of the National Roads Authority was put to tax by members of the Park Bay Committee who went through their reports. Members raised series of concerns and questions regarding the institution's activity and financial reports for the year ended 2014. The main thrust of the questions and concerns raised by deputies focused on major road projects, and these included the financing, rehabilitation, and maintenance of roads, to which the officials provided adequate answers. Bullet point one under the challenges is talking about the lack of enforcement of actual load control, which is resulting in the premature failure of the road infrastructure. Um, it was mentioned yesterday that the EU um, is looking at this and um, it is hoped that um, they will um, intervene. Uh, I just want to find out whether this envisaged um, EU intervention um, is going to be for the 
immediate or medium or, or long term concerning the, the steam corner road. Um, the bypass uh, from, the, from the stadium to the old Joshua, uh, it has caused a lot of uh, damages because I've, already, um, I've witnessed three accidents on that road. And uh, still, uh, the, the, the steam corner road, which, which made more accessible to coming to Banjo, uh, is incomplete. Though they, they've said that uh, they have contracted it to the new contractors. Uh, we don't know what has happened with the former contractors and where these contractors are. Page five. The internal controls and systems. Honorable Chair, the recommendations made here by the auditors is that they advise the NRA to maintain an up-to-date database while skipping individual ledger accounts for every individual institution built for effective monitoring. Um, I want them to set more light on the management answer because for me the answer is really not very clear to me. For the issues surrounding Sting Corner, uh, in my, I apologize to this assembly yesterday uh, during my presentation for uh, the delay in the construction of that section of Sting Corner. Uh, the, con the project was contracted out to Copri. Copri underperformed and we were left with no option but to terminate and save the image of, of course, our government and make financial savings where possible. Several other members also raised issues pertinent to the development of roads and also involvement of local authorities and councils in the rehabilitation of roads and maintenance. This, Momodu Sengor, the managing director of the NRA, said is critical, but was quick to say his institution will collaborate with relevant stakeholders to maintain roads. They were also urged to improve on their GPA compliance, which is reported to have been 88%. Their report was then unanimously adopted without reservations. Rahibite, GRTS. Members of the West Coast Region Council of Elders recently gathered at the Regional Governor's Office for a forum that dealt with issues revolving around the rights of the child. Janke Ture has more on the awareness raising effort spearheaded by the Child Protection Alliance. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child defines a child as any young person under 18 unless under the law applicable to the child, and that their rights and dignity should be well preserved and well respected. This forum, which brought together elders as well as officials from Child Protection Alliance, has one main objective, that is to discuss the rights and welfare of children, especially those under the age of 18. This workshop is to raise the awareness of, of members of the district tribunal, the chief and, and the, the other members of that tribunal, on rights of children, on, on child protection, but, but on the laws. But mainly so that when they are adjudicating cases of children, cases relating to children, they are guided by the best interests of, of that child. According to Mr. Drame, Involving the Council of Elders will be very crucial in the drive to protect the rights of children in the country. The district tribunal is a court at the lower level. So, so we involve them because we know that they deal with children. They have cases of custody, sometimes of access, sometimes pregnancy cases of, of teenage pregnancy. So, so we think that's important that we are able to, to dialogue with them. Um, to, to ensure that they understand rights of children and, and ensure that in their work that children are, are given that prominence, that importance, but also that they are guided by, as I said, the best interests of the child. Musa Amulnyasi is the deputy governor of the host region and he delivered the opening remarks on behalf of the governor. We have an important role in ensuring that our children grow up to be responsible and respectable leaders in the society. I, like many others, do believe that a child guarantees the perpetuation of life and ensures the socio-economic, 
future of the family. We expect that when they go back, they would do quite a lot of awareness raising in their community. But it would, would see a marked difference in the, in the way they work, especially with children or cases of children, that, that all the issues that we learn, the guiding principles of child rights, would become the, the ethical standard of, of the way they work with children. It was a day-long forum which also took the form of question and answer session on issues such as the basic rights and dignity of a child, including the right to education, protection, and quality care. Janke Ture, reporting for GRTS News. The criminal trial which pits the state against Umi Safiya Tujalo, Mansaba, Usman Sow, Sheikh Daudayop, Alpha Kande, Abdul Kamara, Kemo Fati and Buba, who is at large, continued on Thursday at the High Court with Defense Counsel Sheriff Maritambedu, who is representing the second, third, and fifth accused persons, continue his cross-examination of the first prosecution witness based on his evidence in chief. The cross-examination lasted almost an hour with Defense Counsel Sheriff Maritambedu firing several salvos most of which drew positive responses from the prosecution witness. The accused are standing trial on three counts for allegedly defrauding one Abdullah Bite and his partners of over $7 million. Proceedings will continue on March 8th. Media personnel drawn from various outlets are undergoing a training on ways of proper reporting on issues affecting persons with disabilities. The training was jointly organized by the Minister of Health and Social Welfare and the Ment Mental Health Leadership Advocacy Program. Details in this report by Babu Karsengor. Say it right and report it right is what these experts in the psychiatric hospital are advocating. The use of choice words such as crazy, mad, or the sickness of a person, terms attributed to people living with mental illness, Experts say attracts negative stigma which drive many away from the mentally challenged people, leading to more aggression and alienation. It is in this regard that the Minister of Health, in collaboration with the Mental Health Leadership Advocacy Program, organized this forum to demystify this problem. Over a dozen journalists from different media outlets were taking on a day-long orientation to enable them to report issues affecting mentally challenged people and persons with disabilities in a friendlier manner. The radio and the newspaper are very important means of communication in this country, especially radio. When you send out that information, people listen to you. You are influential to every single citizen in this country. It is important when we send that message on mental health that we have in mind the stigma that can go with that message. That we have in mind the positive information we should report about this particular person who is sick. Because the person may not be able to have the opportunity to come to you at your newspaper, at your radio station, or at the television to say what you said about me is wrong. So let us be careful when we send out the message about mental health. Mordo Gazama Health Promotion and Communication Officer of the WHO Banjul Office gave some interesting statistics which connotes a global neglect of persons with mental problems, otherwise known as service users. This has been the cry, if some of us who read the literature in the Lancet series of 2007, you know, WHO and the Lancet, uh, one of the most popular journals, health journalists in the world, launched a very serious campaign to awaken the international community to the need to pay attention to mental health. And of course, that's, those series really they reveal a lot. They reveal a lot about mental health, why we should focus on mental health. Sanka Tanka and others, there is very minimal resources for mental health worldwide. When you say mis resources in terms of human, I'll give an example. What WHO says is, if you look at every 100,000 population, that population is served by 0 0.05 psychiatrists. Babugar Cham, PRO Mental Health Leadership Advocacy Program, advised participants to take the lectures seriously. He noted that the role of the media in information dissemination and advocacy programs of such nature is crucial. Nowadays, we, have, we, are, we are having a problem of intellectual thinking, which is very bad. If you go through it at 95% of what we are saying, we don't mean it. 
because we don't dare going in depth to, to look at the right word to use it at the right place. Most of the time, we get ourselves approximative kind of approaches because the words we use are not really meant for what we really mean. And if you do that in the situation of this kind, where stigmatizations have done what they have been doing, where criticism has done what they have been doing, okay, if you live in that kind of social psychological environment, you know that if you want to do something good, if you want to do something positive, you have to be awake at the very beginning of the hours, you have to be committed. You have to be responsible enough. I trust you because I believe that you love it. Mental health is a behavior and in large part a feeling which interferes significantly with the person's ability to work and to get along with others. The intervention by the advocacy group is to raise awareness of the rights of people living with such conditions. For JRTS News, this is Babu Katsengor. The Gambia Competition and Consumer Protection Commission has gathered stakeholders for a discussion on ways of raising awareness of issues related to consumer rights and protection. Asset Jata was at the opening and she prepared this news report. Consumption of quality food products remains an important issue in public health and the lives of consumers. The body responsible for the welfare of consumers in the Gambia has been making gradual effort to ensure a level playing field for economic growth and also the protection of the welfare of consumers. We decided to prioritize our work. Like we, you know, we look at consumer protection issues in all sectors of the economy. So we have to prioritize. So what we're doing is we're working on a thematic basis and the consensus at the office was that health should be number one so that's why we decided to do this workshop with health professionals like i said we work in all sectors of the economy so we have to partner with experts that's why we have the minister of health and their agencies we have the um, consumer groups as what dogs so what we're going to do we're going to form a thematic group to work on consumer protection issues in the health sector just not to just identify them, but to come up with solutions to the problems. That's, 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 that's in a sense what we're trying to do. This training which brought together public health officers is meant to prepare them adequately for the task of protecting the citizenry. Addressing the participants, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, described the training as important and timely. You recall that Ministry of Health and Social Welfare passed two landmarks act in 2014, namely the Pharmacy Council Act of 2014 and the Medicine and Related Act of the same year. The primary purpose of these two acts is to promote and protect the health and, uh, of the general public through safeguarding, maintaining and enforcing the highest standards in the health sector. Therefore, the issue of consumer protection is embedded and guaranteed on the board acts. And uh, the GCCP serves as a board member to both of these bodies. She further noted her ministry's commitment in protecting the welfare of consumers. The various presentations centered on relevant subjects regarding the understanding of the subject matter. Faber Kariture is the legal executive of the commission. The consumer protection manager spoke of the importance of fair competition, which he added helps in the promotion of quality in market delivery. The CPA 2014 contains your consumer protection right, the people you can go to to enforce your rights for free, no fee, your own consumer tribunal, your remedies if any of your rights are breached. Now the CPA is quite a powerful legislation because prior to the CPA, our consumer rights were not codified in one document. For free consumer, this act covers you. That's, that's why this act is quite powerful, because it contains all your consumer rights. It sets a tribunal just for this purpose, and then it contains your remedies if your rights are breached. For Mark Ujane Kaira, this training is crucial in adding value to their efforts in improving capacity. It's all encompassing, as I said. Um, we would spend a lot of time if I, if I was to talk about the key functions, but I'm just going to say that the agency his main interest is to make sure that the consumers consume good quality, safe and efficacious medicines that are not harmful 
and that you know encourage consumers to report any problems that they have with medicines so i mean basically it's moving along the chain from the importers to the patient that are using the medicines and i think that's a very large chain that we are talking about this training is expected to bolster efforts of the commission in promoting fair play and also protect the welfare of consumers i said to jata grts that report by Isa Tujata takes us to a fourth break, but we will be back with news from outside the Gambia. Stay tuned. The APRC Peace and Law Fundraising Galadina is here again. Yes, the Party of Peace, Progress and One Dog brings you Valentine's Galadina. Under the chief patronage of His Excellency Chef Professor Dr. Haji Yahya AJJ Jame Babili Mansa, President of the Gambia and APRC Party Chairman, the Alliance for Patriotic Reorientation and Construction, APRC, invites you to its Grand Peace and Law Fundraising Gala Dinner, happening on Saturday, 13 February 2016. Venue is at the Senegambia Beach Hotel, commencing at 8 p.m. It is a night of excellence and style. Artists performing include Jaliba Kuyate and Kumareban, Jalikeba Kuyate, Usunjai Senior, Abu Anfafa, and Bai Babu. Enjoy Valentine's with the APRC with one love and one heart. For more information, call 3319744 or 4496968. Welcome back. As world leaders try to hammer out a diplomatic end to the conflict in Syria, the Red Cross says the assault on the city of Aleppo by government forces, backed by Russian air cover, has displaced some 50,000 people. For those that has left, they are caught between a closed border and airstrikes. Warning, their story contains graphic footage video posted to YouTube by activists. It shows what they say those airstrikes left behind. People try to coax this little girl to talk. Her name is Mesa. The voice on the video sarcastically thanks the leaders of Turkey and Saudi Arabia, supposed allies of the Syrian opposition. But that friendship, like that of the U.S., is described as a farce. Colonel Mohammed Al Ahmad, spokesman for the Al Shamiya Front, says they are preparing for the worst. The support was very limited to begin with. We always calculate that it's going to end. We compare the support that the regime gets from its friends and from what we get from our friends, and it's a massive stark contrast. The regime's friends extend from Russian air power to a bolstered ground force. Iraqi militia are high in number. There are Iranian commanders and their fighters. Some Afghan militia, Lebanese Hezbollah. Each militia has its area of operations, but it's Iranian command and Russian air power. All of which has allowed the regime to take control back over land it has not set foot in for years. Splitting opposition control territory to the north of Aleppo in two, cutting off a vital supply line, and is now expanding to besiege the city. The danger is not a possibility, it's imminent, because the regime is advancing towards the south to cut off the last route in. Tens of thousands from the Aleppo countryside have already fled. Hundreds of thousands of civilians are potentially in danger. Turkey's open door policy, as you can see, still remains closed. The strikes in the last 24 hours were so close that one man we spoke to on the other side said that he counted at least 16. And that is absolutely terrified for the masses who just want to reach safety because they are only fully aware of how vulnerable they continue to be to the violence. But no one seems to be listening to the pleas for help, whether it's military support for the rebels or mercy for those who are trying to flee. Arwa Damon CNN on the Turkey-Syria border. Reports coming out of North Korea say that a high-ranking member of the country's military establishment has been executed. 
is the latest in a string of killings involving officials who were once close to the supreme leader. O chief of staff dismissed, status unknown. And now General Ri Yongkil, another chief of staff, believed executed for misuse of authority and treason. Promoted to military chief in August 2013, Ri accompanied Kim Jong-un to military drills. He was last mentioned in state-run media in the early part of January. But what does this latest purge tell us of Kim's control? In the larger context, it's more about, I see it as more strength. He's now into his fourth year of rule. He clearly is in charge, and he's getting rid of a lot of these guys. Kim Kwon Jin, a North Korean defector formally handling the finances of the late leader Kim Jong-il, questions whether the young leader is in charge. Kim Jong-un still didn't gain good control of the military, and still he has to kill the top you know, uh, generals of the military. And that means he has no confidence in the military and very suspicious, and he has no confidence in his command and authority. There is agreement, however, on the high number of executions Kim Jong-un has ordered. As of April last year, South Korean intelligence estimated more than 80 top officials had been killed on the young leader's orders. We take our second break now. The weather report is next. We now join the Weather Center for the day's weather outlook. For the Bobam tree provides good food in times of hunger, rents its back for medications and its sap for glue. In the Gambia, there is a company like the Bobab tree, 100% African and purely Gambian in all aspects, in know-how, design, value, capital and management. That company is Elton. Elton employing hundreds of Gambians and proudly associating itself with development in the Gambia. Elton side by side with the Gambia. Hello, good evening and welcome to the weather forecast. The Gambia was partly cloudy, relatively cool and dry during the past 24 hours. And for the satellite image, it's convective cloud over southern part of Africa. Tonight, the weather is expected to be very blue cloud, cool and dry, becoming breezy later. These conditions are expected to continue till tomorrow morning, there after becoming partly cloudy, warm and slightly hazy. Surface wind will mainly be northeasterly in direction and the speed will vary between 10 and 20 kilometers per hour. Minimum temperatures across the country will be 18 degrees over the Greater Banjo, 16 over West Coast and North Bank, 15 over Lower River and 13 over Central and Upper River region. Maximum temperatures will be 31 degrees over the Greater Banjo, 33 over West Coast and North Bank, 34 over Lower River, while 35 over Central and Upper River region. Low tides will be 0 0.4 meters at 8 a.m. and 0 0.5 meters at 8 p.m. High tide will be 1.7 meters at 1 a.m. and 1.4 meters at 2 p.m. Wave will be 1 to 2 meters northerly swells. The sun will rise at 23 minutes after 7 in the morning. And before we take leave of you, a recap of the day's main stories. Deputies have scoured through the activity report and financial statement of the National Roads Authority before endorsing its viability. In the dock facing criminal trial, seven defendants in the multi-million Dallas fraud case have continued their defense on Thursday at the High Court in Banjo. War-weary Syrian refugees are fleeing much of Aleppo towards the countryside as the fighting in the old city shows no signs of abating. And reports from North Korea are suggesting the execution of a top army general in a military establishment the latest in a series of purges allegedly sanctioned by the Supreme Leader. Well, viewers, that was all in this edition of the News at 10. From me, Winifred Nicol, and the entire news team, thanks for the pleasure of your company. Do stay with us and enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs>